All right. I've been requested to cover something on this topic, although this is not fully what was asked to cover. Um, I want to talk about prepaid forward as well as a forward, well, contract, but I want to specifically talk about the prepaid forward price as well as the forward price. Okay, uh, I'm in search of a good um, question regarding a future contract. So that was the, the other part of the question I was asking me. Anyways, moving on, read the question five to a hundred times as always. I have down to some of the details, not many of the details really actually though. I just have um, a S sub naught, which is 200. Um, this right here is just the, the current price. And this is pretty much standard notation um, because if we want the price at expiration, maybe the expiration is a year, which it is here, uh, then we call it S sub one, okay? In general, S sub T, the subscript T would indicate uh, the time in which uh, that price is valid, more or less, right? Anyways, uh, we have a compounded interest, continuously compounded, so more or less, this is like my, um, whatever that is, I can't think of it now, delta, right? This is like my delta for force of interest. Um, let me write down the other uh, details. We have some dividends paid, and this is really kind of what makes this question somewhat, somewhat work. Um, it's not that much work, really. You kind of understand the concept here. So let me draw a little time diagram uh, regarding the dividends. I should have done this first. I always get nervous. I'm not going to make it look pretty. So anyways, uh, the dividends here are paid quarterly, okay? And we're interested in um, obtaining this contract, basically, or being obligated to buy or sell this contract at year one, after one year. Okay, right, this is a, this is a forward contract, so um, the person buying is obligated to buy and the person selling is obligated to sell. Anyways, uh, I, want to, I want this to be the end of the year, and now I'm gonna have four quarters, so I'm gonna do something, let's see if I can make them decently spaced, that looks not too bad. Not, not that unhappy with that. So a lot of times the way I do this personally is, uh, so I don't wanna get confused, right? I'm gonna put a zero, and then I'm gonna put um, a fourth, and then I'm gonna put a half, and three fourths, and four fourths. You may think this is silly. I don't really care. Um, this is in quarters. This is years down here. So years down here, quarters right here. So I'm gonna put quarters. And I don't know, I'll just get rid of this. Whatever, these are in quarters, right? And we're interested in, uh, the first part of the question is, um, I want the price of a forward contract. Just a forward contract. So let me write that down first. I didn't finish the time diagram, but whatever, I will. All right, this is a notation we use typically for a forward contract. So this is saying, well, this is the price that I'm going to pay in one year for the contract I establish at time zero. And we, as I mentioned, let me get back into this, we have some dividends that were paid for this stock, right, for this stock. Um, this stock pays dividends, and in the first quarter, it pays one, and then they increase by 1%. So if you've been doing questions like this, you should be fairly used to this sort of situation. Um, okay, they're increasing by 1%. And in the final quarter, I'm gonna pay 1.01 cube. So those are my dividends. Okay, these are my dividends. And if you think about this for a second, again, this boils down to concept. If you wanna be able to answer questions like this, you have to understand the concept here. And in part one, part one is just asking me for the price of the one year forward, okay? Part one, this is the one year forward. That's what I'm labeling as this, F sub zero one. This is the price I'm gonna pay in one year, okay? So I'm gonna pay this at this time. This is when I actually pay the F sub zero comma one. 
Okay. How am I going to compute that? If you think about it for a second, um, you're missing out on these dividends that are being paid for holding the stock. So if you want a quote fair price for this, I need to take whatever the price is now, accumulate that. So that's the price right here, right? At time zero, that's the price 200. I need to accumulate this to year one, future value. Okay, that will be part of it. Let me just write that down first. So I need, first of all, I need the future value of S0. The future value of the current price. But then what? Because I don't actually get this stock until the end of the year, I'm missing out on all these dividends. And the assumption also is that this dividend here is not given to me either. So when I say me, I'm saying I'm assuming that I'm entering into the long forward contract, okay, meaning I'm going to buy the forward and I'm, I'm getting it at time one, but I'm missing out on this dividend, which is also paid at time one. So they're getting the dividend and then they're giving me the stock. All right. So then uh, the future value, and now I need to subtract, okay, I'm missing out on those dividends. So that needs to carry over to what I'm going to pay. So because I'm missing out on these dividends paid, these are by the way called discrete dividends, okay, because they're given at specific uh, time intervals, they're not continuous. I need to subtract the future value of the dividends. So if you just understand why it should be set up this way, uh, I think you'll, you'll know what to do after this. I think it's pretty straightforward. Just like anything else, uh, when it comes to these exams, it's just math in general. It's all about understanding concept, right? So let's compute the forward price. Okay, so this is the forward price. This is the one year forward price. So I think you probably got that, but let me just write it anyway. I'm gonna pay in one year and I'm gonna receive the stock in one year. All right, it's good to keep that in mind, okay? All right, so now uh, what is this equal to? Well, I just need to take uh, the future value of the current price, which is 200, and since my interest rate is compounded continuously, uh, annually, with 4%, then this is just e to the 0 0.04, right? So there's the future value of the current price. I need to subtract off the dividends that I'm not receiving, right? Here I'm buying this stock in a year and I'm not receiving these dividends. So to calculate that price, I better take away those dividends. That's what you need to think about this, right? So now this is going to be, now I want future value. I'm actually gonna start at 1.01, uh, so 1.01 .01 cubed. So that is at time one, so I don't need to do any accumulating there. And now I need to add that to 1.01 .01 squared. I need to bring this forward by a quarter. So e to the 0 0.04 uh, times a fourth, right? Plus uh, 1.01 .01 to the one, I did square it a cube, right? e to the 0 0.0 and actually right here, um, this, this one, this is the one I'm actually accumulating. So this is going to half of year. Okay, my, my R is 0 0.04. Let me change this actually, let's change this to 0.01. All right, just some easy math there, 0 0.01. Give myself some room, right? Plus 1.01 E. Now right here, I'm actually gonna cut this in half, right? So this is E to the 0 0.02. Plus, what's my last one gonna be? The, the dividend payment's only one. I need to accumulate that three-fourths, but then the R has 0 0.04, so this is 0 0.03. So E to the zero to the 0.03. Barely squeezed it in there. This is not too bad. This is just calculator work. And by the way, just to mention something, uh, the original question had these discrete dividends paid many more payments. So if you can imagine what you need to do here, if this is a longer string of payments here, you need to compute this as a geometric sum. So it's a finite geometric sum, find the common ratio, find the first term, find what it converges to, well it's finite, it always converges, right? Find that. So in this case though, I have sort of a simplified version. Um, in this case, I can just compute this by hand on the calculator, right, no big deal. And there's nothing else, else really to do here. What you should get when you compute this is 204.04. 
So again, just to sort of recap what's going on here, because I'm asked for the future price, the price I'm going to pay in a year to receive that stock that day, that day that I pay it. And by the way, forward contracts, right? Um, when you make, when you establish this contract at time zero, right? The buyer's obligated to buy, the seller's obligated to sell. We decided on a time, the expiration time of the contract is a year, and I want to compute the price, one of the fair price that I should pay as the buyer. And what is that going to be? It's going to be the future value of the current price minus the future value of the dividends. Things will be slightly different if the dividends are paid continuously. I may or may not do a, a topic, uh, a, a video on that. Anyways, this takes care of uh, that piece. I actually asked a second question, uh, which is just slightly different. Um, but the concept, well, it is different. So you need to think about this differently. So let me now write that down. Uh, and now we want the prepaid forward price. The prepaid forward price. So just to sort of help you distinguish between these two, um, I sort of wanted to encompass them in the same video. The only thing to change here in terms of notation, I'm going to put a P right here. I put a P as the exponent of F and that, or I guess you could also call this, I think a superscript. Anyways, it doesn't matter, right? Prepaid forward price. What is the concept here? If I want to basically obtain a, I want to basically go long on a forward contract, meaning I'm obligated to buy, but I can pay now. I'm going to pay now for that stock I'm going to receive in a year. Um, how am I going to find a fair price for this? Okay, so this is the prepaid forward price. So I'm paying now, I receive later. Well, if I want to pay now, what should I pay? Well, I should probably pay the current price. I mean, it's currently listed at 200, so I should pay uh, the current price. Let me just put for now as zero, because this is just in general. But then, again, I'm not receiving a stock until time one, and we're basically seeing, hopefully, that I'm missing out on all these dividends. I'm not receiving any of these dividends because I don't own the stock. I don't have the stock until time one, so I'm not getting these. So I need to subtract off now the present value, because here I'm paying at time zero. Okay, the present value of all of these dividend payments. Go, okay, so dividends. And again, let me reiterate that this is the, the method if it's discrete dividends. If the dividends are paid continuously, we have a slightly different situation. Let's compute this, not too bad. This is equal to 200. Now the present value of the dividends, this is sort of a more, I think more intuitive uh, to think about in terms of intent, uh, instead of future value. So this is just bring one back, bring 1.01 back, bring everything back to time zero, right? Because that's what I'm paying, I'm paying at time zero. All right, so this is um, e to uh, the negative 0. Point. I need to bring it back a quarter. So this is a fourth of 0.04, so this is 0 0.01. And now I need to bring back 1.01. .01. I need to bring that back a half. Multiply a half to a 0 0.04 e to the negative 0 0.02 plus 1.01 .01 squared. Uh, I need to bring this back 3 fourths of a year. And so this is going to be negative 0 0.03 plus one more to go, uh, 1.01 .01 cubed e to the what? Just negative 0.04. Oh man, barely squeeze it in there. Barely squeeze it in. I think you can see what that should be, right? This is pretty easy to see that this is a geometric sum. This is easier than the previous one, I think, at least in terms of determining the common ratio, right? So if you can imagine, if we had more discrete dividends and things went out to a further year, you may have to compute some sort of geometric sum. Okay, but regardless, this is the sort of main piece you wanna understand. Answering questions about determining uh, the price of a prepaid forward or forward contract come down to really understanding the concept. All right, we pretty much have it, right? And I won't bore you with doing a knowing computations like this. You should get 196.04. All right, so we have, um, just sort of in conclusion, we have the prepaid forward price 
that we just computed, prepaid, I put the upper P, prepaid forward price on this stock is 196.04. And then we've also computed uh, the one year uh, forward price, which we got as 204.04. So this answers uh, the questions for one and two. So tell me what you think, and um, I hope it was helpful. All right.